welcome to a Key Smash Studios Unreal tutorial. In the previous week we made it to where our character could raycast out to get a component's name. This week we're going to be using that in order to determine which button is being pressed and if they're pressed in the correct order. And if they are pressed in the correct order to open up the final door. And if they're not to just debug incorrect. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and create these buttons. We put one over here earlier in the series, but we're just going to lower it a little and we'll rotate it and we're going to put it up on this wall over here so that way we can more easily fit three along it. And what we're going to do with these buttons is we're going to add a box collider to them and we're going to name it what we want it to represent. So later when we raycast on it, it'll get the collider's name. So we want it to match the code that we want it to be, like the code for opening the door, which will be one, two, three. If you wanted to, you could create, you could have the art display the number that you want each thing to represent, but we're simply just going to go in left to right order, this being one, this being two, and this being three. Now that that's done, we want to make sure that we have a door that can rotate. So this door is, as you can see, a door rotator blueprint, but this one is simply just a door. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our blueprints, and then inside our blueprints, we're going to take out a rotator door. And we're going to move it to be in the position that that door is currently in. So we can go ahead and delete that. And now if we were to open it, it'll open the door. Now that we have our rotator in the position that our door used to be in, we can go ahead and go to our C++ scripts and open up our character controller. And we're going to start in our .h. And what we're going to need to do is add two properties. One of these properties will be another door animation. And we'll just call it final anim door. And then our last property will be a array of ints. And we'll just call this inputted code. Now that we're done with our .h, we'll head to our .cpp. And we'll go down to the function that we created last time, which is our raycast one. And previously, we were just debugging the name so that we could see what we were hitting when we raycasted. And now we're simply going to take what we've hit and see if it's one, a button, and two, if its name matches the thing that we want it to be. So we're going to create a few if else's. And what we're going to do is we're just going to see if this name equals the f string of one. And if it does, then we'll simply add to our inputted code array the int of one. And then we'll just do this for one, two and three as well. And now that we've done that, we want to make sure that our inputted codes length is equal to three. And so once it's equal to equal to three, we know that the amount that we want inputted for our correct code has been entered. So we can go ahead and check if the order was correct. So we're just going to create a Boolean 
called correct and we'll make it equal to false. And then we're going to have a for loop that goes through our inputted code array. And now we're going to check if it's correct is we're just going to say the inputted codes i is equal to i plus 1. And the reason we're adding the plus one is simply because we're starting at zero and going while it's less than inputted code, which will be three. So it'll be zero, one, two, but we want the correct code to be one, two, three. So we just want to make sure that we're adding one to the I that we're checking. And then if it is equal to the I plus one, then we know that it's correct. So we'll go ahead and say correct is true. And if it doesn't equal that, then it's not correct. So correct equals false. And then we want to break. Because if, say, the first one was incorrect, but the last two were correct, if you go through this whole loop, then correct will become true up here. And it'll act as though it's, act as though the correct, act as though the input, act as though the user input is right, even though it's not. And just for sake of watching in our output log, the process, we'll go ahead and debug the word correct inside here and incorrect inside here. Now, once we've gone through the whole for loop, we want to make sure to empty out our inputted code, because if it's not correct, you want them to be able to try more than once. And then we'll say if it is correct, we will debug the word open, and then we'll go ahead and set up our door to rotate. So we're going to get a door rotator, and we'll just call it temp door. And then we're going to cast it to the property that we created a minute ago called final anim door. And then we'll say if this temp door casted correctly, and then we'll say if this temp door casted successfully, then we want to call on our temp door to rotate. And that's all we have to do, so now we'll go ahead and compile. So now that our code has compiled successfully, we want to go over to our character controller, and we want to add our final animation door. which should be this one, and we'll move this one up to the puzzle objects, and then we'll go ahead and play. And before you click play, somehow I accidentally put a zero inside the four instead of I++, so just make sure you change it to I++, otherwise you'll be stuck in an infinite loop. So now save and compile that. And then if I switch over to the output log, I forgot one step, so on our buttons, you need to make sure to go to the box collider, and then where it says overlap all, you need to make sure you click block all for all three of these. And you need to make sure that you're doing it on the box collider component and not just the object itself.
So now that the compile has completed, we'll go ahead and click play. And then we'll put in the code of one. I'll drag over the output log so you can see what's happening. So as you can see, I clicked one. I clicked one again, so then if I click three, you can see that the first one was correct at 1, the second one was incorrect at 1. So now if I put in the correct code of 1, 2, and 3, you see that all three were correct. And then it opened, and that the door has opened as well. So this is the end of the Unreal tutorial. To continue on from here, if you wanted to, you could then have it to where when you walk outside you're taken to the next scene or you can continue on with a house and more obstacles or more rooms but thank you so much for watching like and subscribe i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it was helpful